Hey, this is Jim Bergman for Imperial Tool. Uh, we're on site today with Professional HVAC Services. We're actually going to be testing a walk-in cooler. Thought it would be a great time to show a little bit of a video to show you guys how we profile a refrigeration system and how we go through a test to make sure it's operating properly. So what we have right here is a, uh, a top-out package unit and it just simply is evaporator and condenser. So you got the condensed unit over here, evaporator section over here. Evaporator is setting over a hole in the cabinet and it just simply has supply blowing out this way and return coming back up the other side. Evaporator fans are right in the top, condensers here. So what we did, uh, because you got a very short line set between the evaporator and condenser, we're actually just measuring our suction pressure at our compressor port. We're measuring the suction line temperature right down here low inside next to the uh, external equalizer line. And then we're measuring our high side over here on the liquid line right after the dryer. And then probably the only thing that's really important when you set this thing up is that you put the eye manifold in a location that it's sensing the air drawing into the condenser. The air is coming in the condenser on this side, exhausting out over here. We want to make sure that we're reading the ambient air temperature so the eye manifold can accurately calculate the uh, temperatures and pressures for the load conditions. So working on a refrigeration system, there's only a couple of things that you really need to know. First of all, obviously what refrigerant in it is in it. This is a 404A system. You need to know your box temperature, and the box temperature on this is going to be negative 10. And then we also need to know what type of condensing unit we have, and this is what we can call a mid-efficiency condensing unit. Most of your newer condensing units are mid-efficiency. They're not running the ultra-high efficiency stuff like the... Uh, air conditioning industry does, so you typically either have standard efficiency or mid-efficiency, so we need to set up a profile for this system. So in setting up the refrigerant profile, all you need to do is swipe to the right, it's going to open up your profiles. We're going to profile a new system, and when our refrigerant's already selected because I selected it from the home screen. Uh, we could tap this list and pull that up if we needed to. We want to select a refrigeration application. The reason we select refrigeration is it's actually going to configure the app for box temperature, uh, unlike the air conditioning portions will. This has a standard TXV, and then we need to go in here and we need to select our condenser. This is a mid-efficiency condenser, like we said. And then our box temperature, right now it's a 38. We need to set that down to minus 10. And then our class of refrigeration, this is a class one, which means that the evaporator coil is designed to be eight degrees colder than the box temperature. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. And then we need to set our target superheat and subcooling. Because this is refrigeration, a freezer specifically, it runs a, a lower superheat than a typical air conditioning system does. So we're gonna set this down to five degrees of superheat and then a nominal 10 degrees of subcooling. Now, because this is a quick profile. Um, we want to create a profile for this because we are going to test the system again. We have a lot of them like this across the country. We're going to hit submit. I'm going to hit yes, then I want to name it. And then I'm going to call this profile WIF for walk-in freezer. And hit enter. And then what you'll see here is we have the profile named WIF set for 404A and our targets are set for our load conditions. So right now the system is off, so we don't have anything running. So in just a minute here, the system will start and we'll go ahead and, uh, and get some readings. A couple of things to note here on the bottom of the screen. You'll see this is our targets menu. Our target suction pressure is 17, and that's based off the box temperature of negative 10 that we've set. Our target high pressure is 202. That's based upon, in the targets right here, and that's based upon the outdoor air temperature. Our target superheat is 5, our target subcooling is 10. Those are the user inputs we put in. So we're using a temperature and humidity probe to measure the box temperature and box humidity. This is again, this is a concentric grill, so it's sucking in air here. It's exhausting the cold air over here. So I'm just going to set this probe up into the grill so we can get a good return air temperature and humidity measurement. All right, so now that we got the wireless probe in the, ca in the cabinet, all we want to do is uh, slide over. We're just going to tell the wireless probe what it's used for. So we're going to go ahead and just tap on the DB. That's going to bring up the mapping. Select return air. And this is, again, our box temperature. Negative 6.3 is what we're at right now. Now, just to clarify this, because in an air conditioning application, the uh, 
the targets are typically driven by the return air dry bulb temperature. In this case, the target is driven by the box temperature set point that we set up in the profile. So if we were to go to our profile here, and we were to just uh, edit that profile so we can look at it real quick, what you'll see here is our box temperature is set at negative 10. That negative 10 then is our driver for our suction pressure. And because our box is pretty close to satisfied, um, what you're seeing there is we're at negative 6.7 is the uh, pressures within the target zone. Our outside or high side is driven by our outdoor air temperature. And you can see that that's also in the zone. And that outdoor air temperature is measured right here off the I manifold itself and it's at 63.9 that's also a mappable point but since it's already mapped we don't need to map anything uh, we'll just leave it where it's at so you can see right now our suction line temperature is negative 17 discharge line 112.6 liquid line temperature 78.8 and outdoor air at 63.7 if in the case earlier if you were looking at the video just a second ago that you saw we had liquid line and discharge line reversed we just went in and remapped those points instead of having to move the uh, temperature measurement probes around on the gauge set. It's just a lot easier that way. So just a couple of things to point out on the I-manifold. These bubbles here are the indicators of where the pressure should be. And you can see if we look at this system in general, the low pressure within the bubble, it's where it should be. The high pressure is within the bubble, so the high pressure is where it should be. And then these scales here, this is our superheat. This is our, what we call our saturation line. So above saturation superheated. And as long as we're within the yellow band, uh, where our superheat's okay. Our target was five, we're at 1.7, 1.9. So that's okay for, for the refrigeration application. Our target superheat, if we scroll through these here, I'll show you the targets on the bottom real quick. So we got the targets, targets are right here. So our target super subcooling here is at 10 and we're at 11.1, .1, so again, that's within the band, everything's okay. As long as our discharge line is below 225, we're okay, so that looks good. Everything's operating exactly the way it should. Once everything settles out the way that we want it to, we wanna send a report off to the customer, it's really easy. We just go into the uh, side menu here, select reporting, and you can see some of these are green because we've been in those fields already, and the ones that are red are ones that are not fully populated here. So we can enter in model numbers and serial numbers if we wanted to enter in a condenser manufacturer. Um, so you know, whoever that might be, as we enter that in, and we can go ahead and submit that data. And as we submit that data, you'll see that these fields will populate green, indicating that we've been into that area. We get down to take a system snapshot. All that we have to do here is hit take a system snapshot, and you're gonna see that it not only gives you the date, but also a timestamp of when that snapshot was done. Now you'll notice in this case, the refrigeration system, we only pulled in the core measurements because we're really only measuring superheat and subcooling and pressures. We're really not making any of these other calculations of evaporator performance, system capacity, dehumidification, or efficiency. So in this case, we just wanna send a abridged report or a shorter report. Down in the email section, you can add an email in if you want to add in an email of another customer or of the homeowner or of the uh, uh, manufacturer, whoever you want that to go to. In this case, we're just going to hit cancel. By default, my email is selected as a contractor, and all I do then is hit save and send report, and that data goes out, send a report, hit OK, and in a few minutes, that report will hit my email. The primary reason you want your technicians to use the IA Manifold is simply for the sharing and exchange of information. There's really no platform that's as powerful as the IA Manifold for getting the information from the field to the service technician, the engineer, the plant uh, personnel, or whoever you want that information to go to. Using the IA Manifold, you can quickly document and report that information back and be assured that the system was installed the way that it was engineered and operates the way it was designed to. And really, at the end of the day, that's what's most important to the customer. It gives us the best equipment longevity and the highest reliability for all the systems that we install.